anyways, I am here today to introduce uh, Jim Grove. Uh, Jim is a contract employee with the Federal Highway Administration. Mr. Grove comes to us from Ames, Iowa, and uh, he's here today to talk to us about how the Federal Highway Administration supports uh, state DOTs. Jim's a senior project engineer with the Federal Highway Mobile Concrete Technology Center, and he assists states with concrete testing, demonstrating new equipment, and implementing new technologies. Mr. Grove has over 30 years of experience with uh, working with the CP Tech Center, the Iowa DOT, and the county engineer in addition to the Federal Highway. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mr. Grove. Well, thank you, Brian. I, I appreciate the introduction. Uh, and I, uh, it's kind of, a, I think I had a, a new experience here just now because I've never been just ready to stand up and give a presentation and had 200 people walk out. But that's fine. I'm glad somebody came back. That makes me feel a little better and I do appreciate that. Uh, really the purpose here today is to talk about kind of the FHWA and the multifaceted aspects that uh, are available to agencies and others that uh, you know we can have be an assistance for because I think like probably like myself before I was really a, a joined in a part of FHWA I really didn't realize how broad it was and the the assistance and the technology and the things that are available because that's really part of the mission is to help the local, you know, the states, you know, local governments uh, with, with more than just the, the, the finances and some of the regulations and some of those sort of things. That's the, the obvious part many people see, but we're, it's much broader than that. And that's really what I want to talk about today is to kind of give you a, uh, an example because here in North Dakota was a great example of where we were able to pull together a number of the, the, the parts of FHWA to work together and try to, to solve a problem. And <clears throat> so that's what, without uh, further ado, uh, I first wanted to talk about our, our team that uh, really was involved here. And uh, Mike Prowell, as you can see at the top, is the uh, uh, concrete engineer for FHWA that I work directly for. He's in charge of our program. Uh, beside him is Bob Conway, who's with what, the Resource Center. He's really the concrete expert that works more directly with the, the states and different agencies. Lisa McDaniel is with the Iowa Division of FHWA. She really assists us a lot with our big data type work. Uh, we collect a lot of data, and she and Bob really worked that to put it together and to then use that to try to f look at trends and the things that uh, we've been investigating and uh, uh, go forward with that. Uh, the, the fellows at the bottom are my direct uh, uh, co-workers. Jagan Gudlametla is the our engineer in charge of our the Mobile Concrete Technology Center, which is our, our semi that I just showed at the first slide on the, kind of the day-to-day -day operations of that. Uh, <coughs> Joss Binger was the is our new newest employee. He's <coughs> been with us about three years now and doing a great job with us. I'll, I'll, and then on my uh, right here, or left, yeah, right, would be looking for you. Uh, <coughs> Nikolai Morian is our chief technician, and Jerry Clemens is also works with together. They're the really the heart of our organization. Who, when we take the our mobile concrete lab out to a state, they'll drive it out, and then they're really kind of in charge of getting the equipment and doing our a bunch of our testing with with the rest of us assisting on that. Our mission really is to implement the, and new, you know, and use technology to the, the agencies, the places that we're going. Some of the, the new ones are really what we focus on, but there's many older technologies that are that have been around for a long time. But I think our term is that we're underutilized, and we like to try to point out how could they be helpful and how can we make concrete better. Uh, and then also we'll look at uh, specifications and try to work with the states to update specifications when we see some things that in, in all states, they, the specifications usually just kind of keep getting bigger. We never go back to look at them and, and try to realize that maybe we need to make some changes and, and upgrade that. The, <clears throat> 
from both an agency standpoint and from an industry standpoint, the, the QA aspect on the agency acceptance, the, the QC aspect, which is really the contractor's role and how important it is for them to, to be uh, also doing the things that uh, correctly and, 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 and watching and, and monitoring what's going on so we can have a long life pavement. Uh, there's, and, and so really in, when we are involved with a state, it's the specifications review, that the technical assistance was really what I want to talk about uh, here today. Um, training, we've actually, that was a part of what we've also, we also were doing. And then troubleshooting, which is again what uh, was kind of all part of the picture. So hopefully we can get into that. And our, our goal here is really to make better concrete. That's what it's all about. <clears throat> Um, our program has really two emphases, one or kind of major parts, which is the field visits, and that's what we did with our, the, the, uh, the, the trailer, as we like to you know, affectionately call it. We were here in, in, uh, on the project that's up by Stanley for two weeks last year, and then we, we, we'll come in, we do the testing, we work with the contractor, work with the inspector, the agency people, and offer an opportunity for them to then to get, see the equipment, get their hands dirty, play with it. We're glad to do that. And, and, kind of, and, and then it's with real material. It's with, with in this case, you're all, you all concrete. It isn't just something that's theoretical. That's, I think, a, 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 one of the nice things about our program that we're able to do. Uh, we have an equipment loan program, too, that I wanted to make you aware of. And we're not talking just to state agencies by any means. We're glad that any of the equipment that we have and that we show or demonstrate is available for loan. We've got multiples of many, of almost all of those. Um, as long as there's some available, we'd be glad to ship it to you, use it for a while, see if it really meets the needs that you want before you have to you know, spend the money to, to buy it yourself. Uh, it, and it's also not just, like I say, to the agencies, well, you know, local agencies, cities, counties, we're glad to do that. Contractors, that's kind of a, a newer thing, but we've done that for a number of times for contractors that see the value. And many of the things that we're doing nowadays really is probably more applicable on a QC or a process control point in the, in the development of, of our concrete. And therefore, we really want to partner with co individual contractors because it's, they're the important uh, aspect of, the, of, of, all the, of all of it, really, because that's where it starts. Uh, we would go to conferences and open houses <coughs> like, we, like we're do I'm doing today, as well as the technical and the spec review stuff I mentioned before. Um, we support the Tur Turner Fairbanks laboratory that's in uh, Virginia, right by in the DC area, where if they've got some research and need some field ex, you know, work with it and we can then we can utilize whatever or take what they're doing, we'll try it, we'll try to use it, share with them the data and together because really what we're looking at our focus is implementation. We want to take new technologies and try to get them out in the field, make let people be comfortable with them and see the advantages and what that can do for them. We have a lot of program or publications too, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a, a little bit better later. This is where we've been since 2008 with the trailer. Obviously, we get around. Um, we've not been up in the New England so much because they really don't do much concrete. But hopefully, we'll get you know wake them up and realize they're missing out. And <clears throat> we've got and it's a couple more in the south that we'd like to help get there and, and kind of be able to work with them also. This is where we've been last year. Uh, we started out, uh, for the, we just had been kind of in a, a hold situation as a, you know everybody had been for the last two or three years, but once we were back out on the road, uh, we were at, went to Wyoming as a project there, then we came here, uh, then went on to Min Road over our neighbor to the west, or east here, and then finally ended up in South Carolina for a final project. Um, we've got, you can see the list below that of the, the states that we hope to get to this coming summer. Uh, you, you never know quite how that's going to work because it all depends on timing and when projects are going on and are we available, can we get there and then get to the next one and that sort of thing. But that's, that's our wish list, I guess, right now. And you can see the list on the right where some of the other things at uh, conferences and other things we've been to and uh, tried to work with last year. 
here's a, and along with the, the, the trailer visit, then we follow that up with a two-day workshop. And some of you that are in the room were here last week when, when I and Bob Conway were here, and we did the, the uh, one a version of that two-day workshop here over at the DOT building. Um, uh, we, and we really, had the, the part, one of the things I think it's made that uh, successful was the fact that we now have data from a project in the state where we were, where we again will have the workshop. So it's your, it's your own data with the new tests we're talking and you get to really see how did that, what did that tell us that could be helpful in the future and it wasn't just some theoretical thing. <clears throat> the, when we do that, we really, our kind of our, our goal, we'd like, I guess I would say, for attendees would be to kind of split it up, to have maybe half agency type people, half contractors or industry type people, because what we found is it's a really good opportunity to finally get those folks together and, and then when you bring up a topic, maybe have something we want to discuss, but it's a non-confrontational uh, you know, situation where we can just talk about issues and, and hopefully move forward with maybe updating and, and doing some positive changes. Uh, as that last one says, that's a, it's a goal is an action plan where hopefully some, uh, some of the things that are, that are discussed can be implemented and again, uh, utilized to, to be helpful. The, the equipment loan, I talked about that. This is, uh, we'll, any, like I say, any of those will be uh, available. All you have to do is call, contact him, Mike uh, Prowell or, or Jorgen Gulametla. They'll be glad to, to set it up and try to get what you need as soon as we can. Uh, this, w during the pandemic was a challenge when, you're, when your title is the mobile concrete technology and you find out you're not going anywhere, uh, that puts kind of a wrench in the works. But we really did find a, some, you had to kind of reinvent, as the speaker this morning talked about, kind of thinking outside the box. And it, and it really worked out well, and I think we're going to be able to, to, to utilize some of this in the future, too, where we called it live from the MCTC, where we would do a, a Zoom-type call with, with the state. This isn't just a general 3,000 people all over the country. We'd focus it for a state with some specific things they wanted to talk about. But then that's a small enough group we can interact. And so we'd go through the, the, the testing procedure, maybe even run the test, then we could get feedback. And I think on the, on the other side of that would be the, the agency wouldn't have to have everybody come together at a certain spot. We could do it out at wherever you're working at, wherever we're working from at that time, back when we were all pretty much locked in. Um, here's some of those virtual sessions. It, again, it was, we were able to cover all over the country even though we never left, uh, the trailer didn't leave Virginia, and that uh, really was pretty successful. This is the, uh, some of the, these are the one-pagers, we call it. We started doing those a few years back. We've got 14, we'll, we try to produce maybe two or to three, maybe four a year. Um, they, we have a really, a very fortunate and unique, I think, opportunity because our work is all over the country with different ag different materials, different construction, just all kinds of things, but gives us a chance to see how do other people do things, is, are there some patterns of problems or people are having that we need, and, and then that's our way to then kind of get that out with a lot of references to further things, further information that people can pursue on their own, and then try to get the, you know, the, what they need on a various topics here. So there's the web address at the bottom. Uh, if you ever want to do that, just, or you can go to the FHWA website and our trailer there, and these are all listed, so you can do it any time. Now, with, with that intro, I would like to get into some of the specifics that we did here in North Dakota. Um, it started really last year, about a year ago, and I'll get into that. This is the uh, kind of the how it all fit together, and I thought hope, hopefully this would be helpful. It was back in 2020 was the project, so it was paved, there were issues. And then by the, after we've gone through the first winter, they could really see was something going on. Um, the DOT and, and the FHWA back in the, the pandemic days would kind of ha still have some conference calls periodically to talk about things. And one of the issues when I think Kevin was, was talking with our division office here, talking with the, the group asking, What's, is there any problems? And, and yes, the, the project on US 20 came up and 
ask about, you know, we had some severe con construction issues, so troubleshooting, you know, what, what happened and can you help us? And then Gary and, and Kevin contacted Mike Prowl with, uh, that I work with, or were based out of headquarters, and Mike then could see the, the need for some of the other aspects or arms of uh, FHWA. One of them is the Resource Center. That's where, oop, uh, that's where Bob Conway comes in. Ooh, there we go. Uh, and he would then became kind of involved and started to work with uh, the, uh, the division folks. Uh, also from the Resource Center, Center Mar Monica, uh, I never say it, Gerardo was also the, in, brought in because she's really the, uh, our expert on non-destructive uh, uh, forensic type things. So when we, there's some sp specialized tools that, that she's familiar with and can demonstrate to people. And it seemed like this was a good uh, opportunity to bring that in because it would be very helpful. And then finally, the Turner Fairbanks lab that's also located in Virginia could do some of the, uh, the forensic stuff on some of the, the coring and the things that we were able to find there. So all three of them are really inv oop, were even involved. Why is it not? Oh, there we go. Here we go. <clears throat> on this project, for you that are not familiar with it, it was a paving project, and there were about three sections, as I, as I recall, that really had some serious issues. And so the question was, what, what happened? How can we avoid that in the future? And how can, is there some things we need to begin to do to make sure that that doesn't happen? You can see some cracking there. You can see up in the kind of the top middle part. I guess this, yeah, up here. We've got uh, some issues in the surface course and kind of the operation too when we're pushing dowel baskets into the pavement by standing on it, obviously there's a problem. Um, and or here's the one where they, where it actually somehow we caught the basket and pulled it up and that's, that's never a good day. This is some of the feedback that was, that the, uh, <coughs> they were able to obtain from the people, you know, we're, you know, we're almost, we're six months after the project's over so we have, really can't see what's going on. But, but one of the big ones was in the batching operation where moisture was, in, it was really inconsistent. Uh, both the aggregates were, were, had inconsistency in terms of their moisture content, uh, the concrete itself. The, then also one of the, we were told that there were some of the, the people that were doing testing that were really not doing it correctly. And so that was giving us false answers and I think that was part of it. <clears throat> and in the in gradation too is inconsistencies in that. So, and, and then in the paint concrete part of it, it was really, there was no bleed water. It was not, it was very not, uh, the workability was, was not good. Uh, so on the surface, we see some bug holes, uh, may, makes really a challenge for finishing, but it's, you're just covering up the problem. We're not solving it when you do that. Um, the tarantula curve is a, a new, a tool to optimize a gradation and it was really showing that, that yeah there's a problem here before that in addition to what we saw on the construction side um, and also the weather didn't help any as as you all probably know I mean, with, the, with the winds in the summertime when they're dry um, that was really having a problem with you know on the construction side of it making it dry when it was already had a problem to begin with and I, I guess I'd like to get a little bit of, just a little bit tippy toe into the, a few of the details, but I think some points to be made. One of the things that we recognize is that the, from a, uh, a contractor, there's two really important things you need to know when you mix design so that when you're out in the field, everything's gonna work well. One of them is simply, will it go through the paver? In other words, workability, how will that, is that good? This is what, what the picture you see here is what you don't want to see when all of a sudden it starts tearing apart as you're placing it. The other one is, will the edge stand up? Because on a slip form paving, that's a really important characteristic. Well, we, and, and some of the new technologies I've talked about are really a way to help with that. So the, through the optimized gradation is really one of the, the corner, cornerstones of, of how to, to do, solve both of those. Because by minimizing the cementitious, it's more sustainable. It, it, it gives very, probably, usually better strength. 
<clears throat> and then and can then save money and, and everybody wins with that. But that workability is really the key. And, and now we have a way to measure that. For years, we people have tried and it's not worked, but it, uh, it finally has come along. Here's a, just a, 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 the tarantula curve, just as kind of a small one, not to get into the details, but there's three aspects. And if the gradation, if, if the tarantula curve shows that we're in the, the recommended areas in all three of them, then we can be pretty confident that we've got a mix that'll work and uh, go, you know, be, go through the paver, as I've said before. One of the principles that is kind of a bedrock of all this really is something that I learned from a, a fellow named John Lane. He, I came into the DOT and, and became the concrete engineer in our materials office because he had moved on to a different position and so I, I learned a lot from him, and I've always appreciated it. But one of the things that I've, I'll never forget and like to keep pass on some words of wisdom to others is that you can't improve something until you can measure it. And what I've got here is the, the California profilograph, which I think is a really good example of that, that roads got smoother once we could measure it. And I think that is a good example, and, and that's what many of these other tests we're talking of well, in, in, the, in our... Uh, our work as we go out around the country is kind of that same thing. We now have tests, we can do things we've never been able to do it before, and that's how we make things better. <clears throat> One of them is the box test. And I'm not gonna get into the details here because John Adam is gonna be talking, I think, the a little, not the next speaker, but the one after that, and get into some, a little more of the, the details about these new tests. Um, but it's very simple. You can see there's the three steps. You fill the box, you pull the forms off, and you look at it. That's really what it is. Just in terms, there's, you look at the work, the, the consolidation, it, and it will then kind of answer that big question, is it going to go through your paver? The, the other side of the thing is the edge slump, and it also will tell you that. This is what it can look like. We, these are over time. Uh, it says Project A. I should say this is mix A and mix B. But on, on the project there, you can see... <coughs> oh, well. The middle one, the 30-minute one, and I can do this. You can see how bad that's looking in just 30 minutes after we, uh, the, the, we, we pulled the concrete sample out. That's the problem, that we received the... the uh, Aggregate was in, in absorption, pulling some of the water out, getting, you know, really interfering with the workability. And you can see over on the right, there's only a, an hour later, it's just a disaster. And unfortunately, that's where, by the time we got it through the paver on that project, that's, that was where it was headed toward. You can see the one below it is pretty good at the same, but actually it maintained itself a little better it, through time. And that's why this test is important. Do it during the time so you really know how much time do we have to work with it. A contractor needs to know, does he have enough time to, you know, from batching to hauling it to the paver, to getting it through the spreader, to getting it through the paver and finished before we get over there on the right when it really gets to be a problem. And that, so it's a great, uh, thing that we've been able to have a test that can now do that. Another one is, the aspect of that of course is the water, and another test that Dr. Tyler Lay, who, who did the, both the tarantula curve and the box test, and looked at the thing, he can now calls it the Phoenix, where we can measure the water content in a concrete from a sample out of the truck. Um, as all of you know, that not only not always does the batch ticket tell you exactly what's back there, and this way we can actually make a test, and it, it's much easier and I think more accurate, less variability than the current one of the uh, what we usually called the microwave test. Here's a an example that I think really is telling, and I borrowed it from Maria Maston, who's the concrete engineer over in Minnesota. Minnesota back in 1996 implemented a specification where they require they would pay incentive on water cement ratio. So all of a sudden now when your when money's on the line everybody's paying attention. And the, the proof is here the red lines are to the left. Those are the ones that were they measured before the spec was put into place. To the right the blue lines are the one after. And so not only is it 
much, much better, and, and now where you'd hope it would be, it's also much more consistent. And I think that's why they've had you know, very good luck in really building some really quality pavements over the years. This is, okay, now to get on to the project on US 20, one of the tests that uh, Monica was able to bring was the Mira, and that's the, the ultrasonic shear wave, to, to, I always have to be careful, Tomo tomography technique, which is called the, the Mira is up there in the corner, the, the upper right-hand corner. Um, what it does is gives you a three, I mean a dimensional picture of it. What you're seeing, those red globs are inconsistencies in it. Um, they could be, you know, cons poor consolidation, so we've got voids in there. It'll also find the re any rebars, anything that's not, again, an inconsistency with the concrete. So if it's a hole, it's a rebar, whatever. And that was helpful at the, the bottom slide is kind of how you make out make a grid and therefore you can have a bigger area that you test and see the extent uh, of what's going on. And we were doing that up on that project. Uh, the GPR is another do, you know, op option for this, but it's a it's a different technology. It's a ground penetrating radar, um, and it takes really some tech, some expertise to be able to interpret the, the data from that. And that's why we really prefer the mirror because it's much simpler to use. Um, GPR, I think our, our neighbors to the south here in South Dakota uses that extensively, and they're very good at it, and it works for them. But that most people don't have the, the people to do that. And so it, uh, I think they say the mirror is, is really a way to help with, again, the forensics. We, t they, we took cores out of there and then used those and sent those off to the Turner Fairbanks lab to have them analyze and give back some uh, uh, you know, information that they could find. And you can see the voids on the right side there. That's really what the, the problem was. Here's some of the things that they had, which was kind of confirmed some of the things that it was, it seemed to be true, but that the aggregate was dry and it was absorbing the mixed water and therefore that's what created the problem. Um, and then with the haul time be added to that, we're now taking more moisture out of it. And, and then with the wind on top of that, that's really, you know, accelerating the evaporation. So it was kind of the, the, the Perfect storm, although certainly not perfect. Um, we had some the cracks in the in the surface. We had some that were deep. Many actually went clear to the bottom, and that was again part of what what the result of of, of all that. Um, and I think the last one maybe is, is, is significant because near the surface there, where they found an abundance of partially reacted. Uh, rhenic cement material, which resulted in the lack of water during hydration. So in other words, the cement never hydrated. It didn't have the water available. So it all kind of adds up as to why that was, uh, there were problems there. Um, then <coughs> after we, with the analysis there, that was kind of what would happen before. So how do we change that? How does it improve that? And one thing that we were able to do is that uh, Bob, Conway and I came out last spring about a year ago and did, did a workshop, a one-day workshop. We really took some of the material we use in the, the normal QA workshop, the one that we did last week, and helped to the, some of the people that were going to be involved in this, this past year's, this year's project. <coughs> and, it, and, and it was a really good meeting, a small group. We were able to have a lot of good discussions. Um, but we really went over those properties there the, the, with the materials, the mix, uh, the, the quality characteristics, and, and then the inspection aspect of it. There's re really three, I would say, essential building <coughs> blocks that we need for this, the quality, and that's what we tried to emphasize, which was first testing the right quality characteristics. That would be from the... <coughs> the um, the PEM, and again, John's going to talk about that later, so I'm not going to get into the, that's an initiative to try to bring new technologies and, and move concrete uh, industry forward. You know, I, I guess I use as an example, well, first of all, the, slip co the, 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 the slump cone, last year was its an golden anniversary. We've been, that's been in the specification for 101 years now, and we still use it. That just, when you look at that airplane, 
does that you know what does that compare to the to the ones we're flying on today I mean, it's not at all but that's that's kind of the comparison we're still back in that kind of era we need to move forward and that's what that's all about these are the six properties that uh, are identified and john will get into the the details of that so i'm not going to spend much time on it but instead of just measuring strength that the initiative really emphasizes there's six properties we need to be watching monitoring to ensure that we have that quality that, of pavements that we really desire. Um, the other one, the second one is testing real time. It does us no good whatsoever to find out 28 days from now that your concrete doesn't have strength. That, it, that's uh, you know, not helping anybody. What we need is to be able to test real time behind the paver so that there's something that's, that's changed or that needs to be updated or fixed, we can do it. And, and then keep it where we need to be to, to again, have the, the, the outcome that we want. And the final one is consistency. We need to have the same concrete coming out of every truck that pulls up to, and to dump. Um, Rick Bradbury is a, is a quality engineer for the main DOT. And I've, I think I really like his uh, comment that I've heard he made a number of times because he's right on track. He says, you can't have quality without consistency. And I think he's absolutely right about that. The, uh, there we go. Uh, two things, in two ways, I'm just gonna mention quickly, because John again will probably talk about these. Um, Unit you know, weight, that's one of those underutilized. It's simple, it's easy, and it tells us something really significant, because it tells us it's uniform. It, it's a, if the water changes or the air changes, which is probably the two things that affect it the most, you'll, that will be totally taken care of with that. And it costs almost nothing. Every time you do an air test, as we all are do all the time, set it on a scale and read the tet weight. That's all it takes. Almost no time, no cost, no effort, and we really need, and that can tell us a lot about what we need to know. And when you plot that against the your air air content, they should they should be on track with each other and consistent. As you can see here, if that's true, everything looks like it should be going fine, and you should be you'll be okay. Heat signature is the other kind of side of the coin, and what that does is measures the hydration. It and it has it was the chemical reaction, which would be the cement, the admixtures all that sort of thing that, uh, that are relate to the chemistry going on. This is what it looks like if you take a core every day, which most people you will be probably doing anyway, put it in the, the uh, calorimeter. That thing is just a box, a heated box with a thermocouple on the bottom. It's cheap, it's easy, make a cylinder, drop it in, and that's all you have to do. Um, so, and if something goes really off from the rest, you'll catch it. There's an example when you pull the fly ash out of the same mix, it'll show up. I like to call that the yin and the yang of concrete testing or consistency because there's almost nothing that, that will happen that will change in your concrete mix that one of those two won't catch. And it's simple, it's easy, it's cheap. I don't really, this is kind of my soapbox, I guess. And I'm, I'll keep moving on because I know I've got to get done. Um, our field visit when we, for this, the, the next project went really well. You can see everybody's up tight, so we minimized the, what the wind would do with the concrete that was laying out there. Um, uh, this, we had an open house that, that day, as we always do, a good crowd. This is where we were doing our testing at the plant. The, it, again, it was very dry. And, and had those problems were showing up right from the first day. So they kept trying to make changes. And then finally, the, let's see, the third day, it was getting better, but we hadn't solved it. So it was decided we're gonna change the mix, which they did. And then it started to work much better. And we were able to, to finally get a, the pavement the way we wanted. As you can see, our box test samples were very good. Now these were at the plant, so that doesn't, take into consideration out the taper, but it still was, was much better. Here's that a tarantula curve. You can see you know, everything is within the limits except maybe one point, but still it uh, certainly improvement and, and worked well. The, uh, okay, uh, air content was very consistent. Uh, unit weight was certainly within the limits. That was a, certainly a good thing. 
uh, and again, our consistency here with maybe one exception. Now that, that's the sort of thing when that happens, that's the time that kind of bells and whistles go off and you go, okay, what's going on? These, you know, a, a control chart doesn't tell you what happened, it just tells you something happened and then you can go on and look at it from that. Resistivity was good, but you're really into the low permeability, which is really good. And so I think you're gonna have a, a very pavement that ought to last a long time out there. Uh, we had the open house and here's a, a good crowd there and hopefully they were able to see some things that uh, were of interest. We have a, there's an excellent publication I wanna just mention, which is the quality control for concrete paving that's on the website at the CP Tech Center. If you go online, you can download the whole thing or just look at it that way. Uh, but very, a, a very good document that the CP Tech Center just put out last fall, uh, fresh off the press. Oop. Here is the group that was involved that I was talking for just to finish up. Uh, <coughs> Kevin is on the left and Joggin is ahead of him, then Mike, uh, myself, Monica, Jack, who was at the Turner Fairbanks uh, lab and was, you know, oversaw the analysis of the forensic, and Bob. So kind of that's our team and that's my story. So with that, I don't know if I've got time for questions, but uh, or not. A couple of minutes? Okay. I've... <laughs> Thank you. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them if I can. Hard to see with the lights here. Jump up and yell or wave or just throw something at me. Okay. I, I don't blame you. You're all interested in dinner, and I appreciate that. So, thank you. All right. Thank you, Jim, for sharing your experience and your expertise with us. You know, uh, Jim has been so gracious as to not get stuck in one but two North Dakota blizzards in the last week coming back and forth here. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, give Jim another big round of applause here. Thanks, Jim, for everything.